Uh, hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. And this week we're gonna talk about everything wrong with Inkscape 1.3 and how we've tried to fix them. Um, I've just merged about 87 different fixes and other things, uh, basically issues that were pointed out by users who used Inkscape 1.3 and either found that it crashed or that it basically removed some piece of fun functionality that they were using, or they could no longer do, do their work. And uh, what we did is we prioritized all of the issues that came in, and then I was asked by the Inkscape pro project to go through and fix them. So I wanna give a big shout out and a big thank you to basically my sponsor for this particular work, which is the Inkscape project itself. Um, thank you to all of the people that donate to the Inkscape pro project and to the people in the pro project who uh, put together the the um, uh, bug accelerator program and allowed me to basically spend time working on making a new version of Inkscape 1.3 with hopefully all of these issues fixed. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my regular spons sponsors who are helping me work on color stuff, but we're going to save that for next time I do a video. Uh, which is actually in two weeks' time because I'm skipping a week for my birthday. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the fixes. The first thing to note is there are about, about 17 individual fixes for crashes. Uh, at least five of those are to do with live path effects. So this is things like taper, um, the Boolean operations, um, ju just a bunch of different live path effects. I want to give a shout out for Javier. He worked particularly hard on trying to fix all of the reported live path effect crashes specifically. Um, and it was between me and him trying to get those merge requests into the old branch was difficult. Um, so a big thanks for him for being patient with me as I tried to merge his stuff in. Um, apart from the live path effects, there's also some uh, great improvements to the page tool uh, fixes for uh, the label, editing labels. Um, the scaling issues with, with with the units, editing the page size if it was if it was a custom size, and uh, a weird one which is if you had a dark background and a light page uh, color, you wouldn't be able to see the resize hand handles anymore. Um, that's been fixed. Um, export di dialog. We're we're now like a bunch of different. Um, small fixes for things like the the uh, export type would change accidentally if you change if you edited the file name uh, if you press the file save di dialog it would change the export type um, some weird stuff that happens sometimes when you export sported uh, as plain SVG and it would stick uh, uh, XML um, fragments into the SVG file sorry about that that was actually my bad um, and also the ability to export multiple files on the command line uh, that has been fixed. So hopefully now you can export like a whole bunch of PNG files from you know each of the individual pages. Um, the text tool. We need to point out some of the stuff that's happened in the text tool. So this is the uh, style issues that happened when you did object to path. Some of the text that was like three T spans deep. Uh, would lose its style. That's been fixed. There's a new feature, uh, text text to glyphs, which I, I did mention in a pre previous video, and it should allow you to basically split a piece of text into individual glyphs so that if your workflow requires uh, the, the old functionality of object to path where it would create essentially a group of paths, um, this is how you would do that now. You use text to glyph and then object to path if you still want paths. Um, there's uh, a fix from uh, Raphael to do with the, the um, if you used a scaled and resized path as a flow text, that flow text would actually be offset weirdly. Um, and that was to do with how the transformations were applied. That has been fixed. Um, there's a bunch of fixes with PDF uh, imports. Basically, the fonts were getting ma mangled. If you have the font installed now, um, it, it, Inkscape will do a much, much better job at matching that font name uh, with the postscript name that's inside the PDF. And so you should end up with the correct font uh, inside your document. Um, so much less of your, do of your font should be turned to paths, for example, in the, in the new P PDF 
import di dialog. There's also some some crash fixes to to do with PDFs when essentially win Windows PDFs are in UTF-16. Sometimes we would mangle those uh, both font names and uh, page names and some la label stuff. They've all been fixed. And some colors to do with fonts. Sometimes the text would end up being imported with the wrong color from P PDF. Uh, and non-PDF text stuff, the font collections have a whole bunch of uh, life improvements that allow essentially the uh, new font collection to just be polished a little bit more. Um, small issue with the clipboard where you would get warnings that nothing was deleted despite the fact that you're pasting. Uh, grid lines have been uh, fixed. The, they had a snapping issue uh, and they were offset wrong. Um, path to stroke, I fixed a bug in the and the sharp corners. Basically, the last node would always have an extra node there that has been fixed. Um, there was a pro problem with the resize to selection with an inverted y-axis. That's been fixed. Uh, the highlight path has been fixed. Uh, there is an absolute boatload of, of uh, object and layers dialog fixes from crashes to um, uh, being able to select mul multiple layers to uh, buttons that allow you to actually control stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of like just quality of life stuff. Um, some new icons. Uh, there's been fixes to make sure that there's no zero size panels and zero size tool toolbars. This sometimes happened. Uh, the snap panel has been fixed. I also added in the, um, you can now deselect snapping to grid lines. So now it will only snap to grid intersections. Uh, that was a big issue for a lot of pe people who were using grids extensively and they wanted to basically make sure that, that grid intersections is what they care about. They don't care about snapping to the actual lines themselves. Um, so that's an option now in the snapping tool. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, there's some Mac OS bug fi fixes too. Some 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 crashes with the pr preferences. Um, I should actually go through the crash crashes because there's a few ones where I think you might be in be interested in. One is like editing a gra gradient uh, translucent layers in, in the layers dialog, uh, switching to the overlay overlay mode, um, object cro cropping. That's where you delete a whole bunch of other objects. Uh, sim symbols without path da da data, uh, ex extensions would s sometimes just freeze up. Uh, that happened an awful lot, actually. Um, crash with extensions when you do live pre preview, uh, times when it just deleted your con content entirely. Um, fix extensions, uh, gen generally those have been improved and updated because we keep those up to date more, more frequently. Um, no tools with zero line segments. And a large image not found, which was a hilarious bug where I, uh, where Inkscape would generate a absolutely humongous image not found image, and that image would be so big Inkscape would crash. Um, which is, <laughs> um, so that is just a, a summary of some of the fi fixes that are going in because uh, Inkscape is a project that is predominantly run by volunteers, and um, you know doesn't have a huge business that's like processing everything and polishing everything to the nth degree and most of our testing is done by by you guys you guys come to us and you you use Inkscape for a specific thing and you tell us what's wrong and when you do that you go through the issues tra tracker you're very kind to test things when when we try and fix it and um, that's how we get stuff polished that's how we get stuff fixed so uh, hopefully you guys will be very happy with the with the results. We've managed to accumulate quite a lot of fi fixes for this 1.3.1 release, making sure you get these fixes before 1.4, um, basically because polishing always helps stabilize uh, the previous release so that if, forbid, 1.4 is unstable, uh, there'll always be this v version that you can come back to. Um, and I would encourage everybody to uh, remember that um, even though you you consider yourself to just be a user, uh, we in the Inkscape project consider every user to be a uh, collaborator, a contributor, somebody who uh, we look to to tell us what's wrong. And so um, if you take uh, your job as somebody who complains in the most constructive way possible on our issues tra tra tracker, seriously, we will take hopefully seriously your reports to us about what you find frustrating and what you find difficult in, in Inkscape. 
Okay, so uh, 1.3.1 should be released in probably about two two weeks. I'm going to push for a release can, can candidate this week, uh, and then I'm going to hopefully that will just turn into the 1.3.1, assuming that there's no bugs. Uh, one thing I would like if if people get hold of that release can, can candidate, please test live path effects. It's it's a particular uh, particularly troublesome piece because a lot of the code has changed and I want to make sure that it's not reintroducing new problems or crashes. Um, but apart from that, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that 1.3 was at least good enough and that 1.3.1 will be even better. And um, yeah, I'll see you in a fortnight. That's two weeks time. Um, is there anything else? Leaves are falling. Halloween is in two days. I'm not doing a special video this year. Um, yeah, thank you. I'll see you next time.